This section is all about bringing real-time functionality into the app by using GraphQL subscriptions. What are GraphQL subscriptions? Subscriptions are a GraphQL feature that allows a server to send data to the client when a specific event happens on the back end. Subscriptions are usually implemented with WebSockets, where the server holds a steady connection to the client. That is, the request response cycle that we used for all previous interactions with the API is not used for subscriptions. Instead, the client initially opens up a steady connection to the server by specifying which event it's interested in. Every time this particular event happens, the server uses the connection to push the data that's related to the event to the client. When using Apollo, you need to configure your Apollo client with information about the subscription's endpoint. This is done by using functionality from the Subscriptions Transport WS MPM module. Let's add this dependency to our app. Open up a terminal, navigate to our project's root directory, and execute the following command. Next, make sure Apollo client instance knows about the subscription server. Open up index.js and add the following import to the top of the file. Now, let's update our configuration like so. Here, we're instantiating a subscription client that knows the endpoint for the subscription's API. Notice that we're also authenticating the WebSocket connection with the user's token that we retrieve from local storage. Now, we need to replace the placeholder subscription API endpoint with the endpoint for the subscription's API. To get access to this endpoint, open up a terminal and navigate to the directory where project.graphcool is located. Then type GraphCool Endpoints. Now copy the endpoint for the Subscriptions API and replace the placeholder with it. Usually subscription endpoints look like WSS with a project ID. For the app to update in real time when new links are created, you need to subscribe to events that are happening on the link type. There are generally three kinds of events you could subscribe to. You can subscribe when a new link is created, an existing link is updated, or an existing link is deleted. You'll implement the subscription in the link list component since that's where all the links are rendered. Open up linklist.js and add the following method inside the scope of the link list class. Let's understand what's going on here. We're using the all links query that you have access to inside the components props. That's because we wrapped it with the GraphQL container. And we're going to call subscribe to more. This call opens up a WebSocket connection to the subscription server. Here, we're passing two arguments to subscribe to more. First is the document. This represents the subscription itself. In your case, the subscription will fire for created events on the link type. For example, when every new link is created. The second is update query. This is similar to update, and this function allows you to determine how the store should be updated with the information that was sent by the server. Go ahead and implement update query next. This function works slightly different than update. In fact, it follows exactly the same principle as a Redux producer. It takes as arguments the previous state and the subscription data that's sent by the server. You can then determine how to merge the subscription data into the existing state and return the updated version. Let's see what this looks like in action. In linklist.js, implement update query like so. All you do here is to retrieve the new link from the subscription data merge it into the existing list of links, and return the result of this operation. The last thing here is we got to make sure the component actually subscribes to the events by calling subscribe to more. In linklist.js, add a new method inside the scope of linklist component and implement it like so. A note, component did mount 
is a life cycle method of React components that will be called once right after the component has initialized. Sweet! We can test our implementation by opening two browser windows. In the first window, you have your application running on localhost 3000. The second window you use to open up a playground and send a create link mutation. When you're sending the mutation, you'll see the app update, update in real time. Next, let's subscribe to new votes. When subscribing to new votes that are emitted by other users, we also need to make sure that the latest vote count is always visible. Open up linklist.js and add the following method to the linklist component. Just like we did before, we're calling subscribe to more on the all links query. This time we're passing in a subscription that asks for a newly created vote. In update query, you're then adding the information about the new vote to the cache by first looking for the link that was just voted on and then updating its votes with the vote element that was sent from the server. Finally, let's go ahead and call subscribe to new votes inside component did mount as well. Awesome! I think our app is now ready for real time and will immediately update links and votes whenever they're created by other users.